Hey everyone, welcome back again to some more Python programming tutorials. We're still looking at the NPy screen module. In the last couple of videos, we've been checking out form objects. You know, we were looking at code for the action form, for the split form, and even the action form, we were looking at special functions like on OK and on cancel that gave us functionality whenever the user pressed the OK button or the cancel button. We looked at uh, pop-up messages, kind of dialog boxes that can give us choices or just display a simple message or we could also have the yes and no or OK cancel buttons. So that works kind of nice for us. And we actually even set up a new system where the set next form and uh, set next form, set next active form, whether or not we want to stay on our form or exit the program, has functionality between these on OK and on cancel uh, functions. So we can actually remove our define or def for after editing function. So I'll, I'll kill that. And I want to show you guys something new here. Actually, I'll save this as a. 09.py before I do any of that stuff, and I'll save this old one again as 08. Get back over there, it's 09. Okay, cool. So, this time around, I want to show us how we can be using both the action form and the split form, and maybe even a new type of form that we can get into in this video. So, notice that we actually inherit all of the properties of action forms because they're objects, they're classes that we can inherit from. You know, that's object-oriented programming, that's mother-child inheritance. Who's to say we couldn't also inherit from the split form? Like in our class declaration, all it takes is a kind of like arguments in, in a kind of definition or declaration, you just use a comma and then add the other one that you want to inherit from. It's just inside the parentheses for our class declaration and definition. Now when I run this code, you'll notice we've got our split form horizontal bar as well as OK and cancel for our action form. Cool. So uh, I'll just kind of quickly make a little bit more uh, functionality with that. I'll say draw line at equals 7. Uh, I do want to set edit w to 1 for our save thing so I can just quickly get out of there. And uh, now we'll actually take a look at the documentation and see what we can add, what we can do next. Like I said, we were looking at form objects, we've been checking out action forms, we've been checking out split forms, and now I finally want to get into forms with menus. So this is similar to the form class, but provides the additional functionality of pop-up menus. To add a new menu to the form, you use the method new menu, name equals whatever, and this will create the menu and return a proxy to it. For more details, see the, sec the section on menus below. So before I forget, let's just add uh, NPy screen dot form with menus. And you'll notice there is an action form with menus class. It also has a action form class as well as the pop-up menu functionality. But we can achieve the exact same thing with our multiple inheritance. So right now I don't see any problem with this method. But I mean, if you guys do or it gives us trouble, then of course we can always change it back. So let's take a look at uh, that menu section way, way down at the bottom of the documentation. Doop -ba -doop -ba -doo. Here we go. I'm going to do a little bit of reading here. Hope you guys are okay with that. The menu section tells us that some form classes support the use of pop-up menus. Menus could in theory be used as widgets on their own. And note that pop-up menus here are being selected to use instead of drop-down menus. Now, you might be used to drop-down menus on other GUI interfaces like uh, your web browser or anything else here. Like, uh, you might be able to see this drop-down menu that I've just got with Firefox. So, they're being used, pop-up menus are being used instead of drop-down menus because they're more suitable for a keyboard environments and they make better use of the va available screen space and are kind of easier to deploy on terminals of varied sizes. So, how it works, or at least what you'll see, is that the supporting forms will display an advert, the menu system is available, and a shortcut to the list of menus. If the form has multiple menus, a root menu listing all of them will be displayed. Now, menus are usually created by the form's new menu method. Uh, the, a recent version adds the argument shortcut to this method, and that allows you like a keyboard button that you can press, like a key binding to activate the menu. So, after a menu has been created, the following methods on that object are useful. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. In our code, let's create a menu object, self.menu, and that'll kind of keep track of what it's doing 
like the actual menu object, kind of like the widgets we have up here. So it says new underscore menu. We can give it a name, let's say main menu. And then there was also a shortcut option that said we could use, like M. So I think we have to add it, but I don't know. Let's take a look. If I run the code, Python 09, hey, we've got our menu right down here. If I hit control X, that's what this, uh, I'll show you one more time. That's what this little advert label shows us, that control X, that caret means control. Control X will pop up the menu, and you can see our main menu title right up here. Now note there's nothing in the menu, <laughs> so if I hit enter, we're going to get an error because there's no list index we can actually grab, but we have to add stuff to the menu. The documentation shows us, hey, we've got an add item function, and these of course have a lot of optional arguments. The text of course is the string that should be displayed on the menu. On select, this next one is a function to be called if that item is selected. And there's a warning here by the author that this is one of the few easy opportunities in this module to create circular references. You may want to pass in a proxy to the function instead. So the author, he's tried to guard us against circular references as much as possible, but this is just one of those times where we can't really see what you're going to do. We can't see into the future or try and guess how your program works. And of course, there's the ability to add a shortcut, and you can also have a list of arguments or a dictionary of keywords that can be passed to that function. So let's try and do something real quick. Self.menu.addItem. Let's say, okay, it doesn't take any keyword arguments, it's just the text right away. Let's say item1, and then the function it wants. So let's say pa press underscore 1. So if you, if you press 1, you know. And let's actually supply the shortcut. Shortcut can just be 1. And we don't need any arguments or anything else to it. But we'll have to create this press 1 function. And we'll do the same thing with a second argument. I'll do press 2. And it'll add another option for exit form. And exit form will be the function. And let's do control x. I wanted to use x, but when I did some experimentation with this earlier, I noticed that x, that button, actually kind of acts as the enter button or the select button on a form and in NPy screen. So control x is a better idea. <laughs> you just use this caret symbol to denote that you want to use control. Now let's define these functions. Let's define press 1, self, and uh, we'll use NPy screens notify confirm message dialog box that you says you pressed item one item one can be our title and yeah we'll actually select the the button there we'll do the same thing for press two and now let's actually build a function for our exit program or exit form now here's an interesting thing you know that this self.parentapp.setNextForm that sets the next active form, but if we exit this form, if we choose this menu option, there isn't a signal, a signal to our form or application that we want to go to the next form. So we actually have to do self.parentApp.switchForm with a capital F, and then we select it to none. So now it'll know, okay, go to this form, but if we say none, it'll know to close our program for us. Cool. Let's try and run this code now. Really simple, really easy. Oh, global name press one is not defined. Okay, remember that because we're in an object, I have to use our self keyword with just about everything we do. Now we run this control X menu. Item one and item two, you can see those shortcuts being displayed. I can hit enter to, of course, select these, or I can go ahead and press the shortcut, like two. And now I get, we press item two. Now if I do control X to exit the form, the control X not work for me. I might need to use a capital X so it knows. Now let's try it. Control X, control X. Yeah, and we exit out of our form just like that. Cool. What else is there? What more can we do? Add items from list. Um, this actually includes uh, a text and function and shortcut stuff that you can use, but it's actually looping through them as if they were a list. So rather than me going through all of this, 
and adding items one by one, calling these functions over and over again, you could just kind of line up things in two arrays between the text that you want for each item and the function that corresponds with, with each item. I won't show that off, but note that you can do that. And submenus. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at those. Let's create an object for it. Self.submenu. And the function that it says to use in the documentation is actually new menu dot add new submenu. And it has all the similar uh, functionality and kind of arguments as the regular menu. But here's an interesting one, free display function. So this actually allows you to have a function that will be called before the menu is displayed. So depending on the circumstance and situation in your program, what's currently going on in the form, maybe if you want, you can adjust the content of the menu before it's being displayed. And of course, the arguments and the keywords correspond to this PD func or this pre-display function. So I'm not going to play with that, but I want you to know that that has functionality there. Add new submenu. So let's say a submenu. And then we can use shortcut S right there. Self.submenu.addItem. Now we just kind of treat it like a regular, um, I want to say, uh, menu here, of course. And it'll be like, woo, subscribe, blocks. <laughs> I'm not, I won't, I won't give this a, a function to go along with it. I won't give it any functionality or a shortcut or anything, but just wanted to show how you can set that up with the sub menu. Real simple, just creating it like an object. Control X menu, a sub menu, it's way down there. If I hit S or enter, I hit S this time. It says, hey, we've got our submenu title and then our woo subscribe blocks option. Nifty. All right. Now, here's the interesting thing that I want to touch upon before I leave you. Notice that the submenu doesn't really go away, <laughs> or the menu doesn't really go away. That's pretty much because our, uh, our, I want to tell you that our form is so tiny, right? It's over here. If we had not changed it, if we hadn't changed the size or anything like that, the submenu will look like it's gone away because it's going to be hidden behind actually the uh, the form. So I think I wonder if we can draw a line at a negative number so it'll know to go from the back backwards up. Nope, it does not know to draw with a negative number. <laughs> so let's say 22. So okay, now we've got our Empire screen form at the full screen. If I hit Control X. Our main menu appears, and then once all of it's over with, it hides behind the, the form that we've got created for us. Cool. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys in this video. Um, thank you for sticking with me. I know this kind of turned into a longer video, and that's what they're all doing at this point. But hey, I want you guys to learn and know what the documentation is telling you and kind of have a walkthrough for it. So thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.